This is a roadmap that will take any individual who follows this roadmap, who applies the principles, who puts in the hard work to financial freedom and fulfillment. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Fairley. How do I start the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? The most unselfish thing a person could do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the BDB podcast. I'm your host, Nicholas Barely. If you're watching on YouTube right now, make sure to hit that subscribe button with a little bell so you know when we drop our three episodes per week that we're launching here in this brand new studio. And if you're watching on iTunes or listening on iTunes and Spotify, you're going to hit the subscribe button there as well to make sure that you're getting all the new content that we're throwing out, like the interview that I'm dropping today with a great friend of mine that moved to Puerto Rico that nets over seven figures every single year for the last eight years. He's interviewed over 3,000 people in a podcast format. And during that, has had over 100 million downloads. And on this podcast, he actually talks about his brand new book he's released with five extra bonuses called Common Path to Uncommon Success that you could check out at UncommonSuccessBook.com. Welcome, my friend, JLD, Mr. John Lee Dumas. Mr. JLD, welcome to the BDB podcast, man. BDB with JLD and NB. Holla. That's what's up. I haven't seen you for a long time, but I have you on a 55 inch screen TV Whoa. right now. So it feels like regular size, man. You're right here. Yeah, except my for pores the same are just like saucer plates for you right now. <laughs> well, we're the same height, which is a little bit different. You're taller than me in real life, but right now. <laughs> IRL. Yes, well, I'm grateful to have you here. First off, I'm excited to be able to chat for people that don't know. I launched my podcast. I tried not to have the inspiration of JLD because I thought, man, he's got a podcast. I don't want to start one because of that. Uh, but just being around him, it kind of wore off on us. And now we have this whole group of over 5,000 people that pretty much all came from the, the podcast. And uh, it's just been a really fun experience. So thank you for that. Even though you ditched us, left San Diego and took off. To uh, you ditched San Diego too. <laughs> just years later. Actually, if you could update me, people right now have been in quarantine for 2020 and you've come out with like a phenomenal book, first off. I'm really excited to jump into that. I truly believe for the people listening that books are straight up people's best stuff compiled into like the cheapest thing. Ever. And I don't mean cheap in the quality, but literally low cost. Dude, it is, it does not cost much money. Come on, 16 bucks for 10 years of my best stuff. Come on. Yeah. So I'm excited to jump into that. But tell me, how has it been? moving to an island, right? Because people are scared island fever. They're scared to, to be in a new spot. You took a big leap. It was even scary for me to go to Austin and I'm just, I don't have any water around me. That's the biggest problem. How has that transition <laughs> been? It's been a few years now. Yeah. So back in 2016, living in San Diego, loving life, having a bunch of entrepreneurial parties, really connected in the community. Of course, Nicholas and Amanda would come over all the time. We'd play games, have fun and um, you know, just have a grand old time. I love San Diego. It's amazing. But when I hit my third year in a row of writing a seven-figure check to Uncle, Uncle Sam, I knew something had to change. And despite the fact that I loved San Diego, and I still do, we were just there for a month and a half over the fall because we love going back to visit. I just will never, ever pay that kind of tax um, if I can avoid it legally. So found out about Puerto Rico and here we are. We've been here now for five years. We moved here in early 2016. Um, we love it to death. It was a test run. We we're going to stay here for a year. If we didn't like it, we we're going to go back to San Diego and just suck it up or maybe some, or maybe to Texas. But, you know, like going to Texas is kind of like, oh, like, you know, I'm not going to have the cherry on top of the Sunday, but I'm still going to eat the whole Sunday and have like the 3,000 calories instead of 3,100 calories because you're still paying federal tax. And that's the big kicker. So you just want to just, you know, skip the whole Sunday and really get ripped in some amazing abs like Nicholas and you just move right to Puerto Rico. You pay no federal tax, no state tax, a flat 4% corporate tax. Dude, I bought a beautiful, gorgeous dream home on the Caribbean, $2 million. In 17 months, I had saved more in taxes than the house costs. And again, I've been here for five years. And something that I kind of told uh, Nicholas off camera before we started was, Literally, we love Puerto Rico so much that we uh, that they could take away the tax incentives tomorrow, which they won't because it's the best thing that could ever happen for the islands. But they could take them away tomorrow and we wouldn't leave because it's the best. It is literally paradise down here. We love the, the people who have moved to Puerto Rico 
Like they just have these amazing qualities of number one, doing well financially. And that's why they're paying a lot of taxes elsewhere. They move here. They're location independent, which is an awesome trait to have. And they're um, adventurous. So you have like those three combinations. It just, it's like a funnel, as we all know about funnels that spits out amazing people down here in Puerto Rico. And did I get island fever? I get it. But the thing about Puerto Rico, which is interesting is it's 111 miles long. And like, if you've ever thought about the last time you jumped in a car when you were in Austin, Texas and drove 111 miles, it doesn't happen very often. So, I mean, like you're on this massive landmass that you never really, you know, to me, feel like you're on, I just feel like I'm on the coast, just like I was on the coast in San Diego. It doesn't feel any different. If I want to hop on a plane, I'm in New York City in three hours and 15 minutes. I'm in Philadelphia in three hours. I'm in Florida in two hours. I mean, it's really easy. It's a beautiful island and we absolutely love it. And I'll tell you, once you start keeping the money you make, everything changes for the better. Even moving to Texas, I couldn't see myself going back to California. And literally, I'm born and raised in San Diego. I never thought I would ever leave. And as soon as you open yourself up to the thought or the possibility and then take that step, what I think is cool about what you talked about is that you would live there in Puerto Rico anyway, that I was almost going to follow up and say, let's say they took away. Are you hoping one day that they take away this tax break? Because now you're almost stuck, like almost like the the golden handcuffs that people have with right. benefits and jobs. Good like, analogy. Man, if I if I leave this and I'm going to lose what I what I have, all these benefits, but you love the place, even if there wasn't the benefits. And we didn't know that we would. We gave it a year trial and we were honest at the end of the year. We're like, holy crap, we love this place. Is that for the people listening though, to do something and try it out for a year? Because how did you feel before you left? Did you think about doing something new and you thought, well, what if, what if we don't like it? And then you had to all of a sudden make a decision to just do a year to try something out. How, how often do people not do that in jobs? trying to start a new business. Oh, well, I'll try the business for a year. And if it doesn't work out, they don't take these risks. I think that was a good lesson in general. Yeah. It was um, something that, you know, was a really big decision for us. We're like, Hey, we built a location independent business to be location independent. And we love San Diego. It's beautiful, amazing people, wonderful weather, but we hate how they treat businesses there. And we just weren't going to stand it anymore. So I was at your Freedom Journal launch in San Diego. This was, uh, I, I mean, we had a ton of them. I've used them 2016. a ton of times. 2016. It killed it. I mean, I don't know how many pre-orders you had, which right now your book's on pre-order. For the people listening, the thing that I love about this is that you get it before anyone else. Like this, you want to get in, like first person to get in, get the information before the rest of the world gets to see it or hear That's it. That's a good point. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm on it. I'm like, I want the bonuses. I yeah. want all the different things. I want to win whatever we can win. Yeah. A lot of prizes. Uh, yet you've been so six. I mean, one of the most successful podcasts on the planet interviewing, man, thousands and thousands and thousands of people writing epic things and putting together compilations of things that can help people hit goals. And they're all practical. This is what I love about what you do is that everything is very step-by-step practical, systematized. I mean, your interview format for years, very practical, very systematized, very organized. You taught batching, right? You used to do 30 interviews in three days. And, you know, these are the things that I used to watch from a distance and see. So one of the things that, that we had talked about before was just how different it is, These all these gurus in the space now. When you first started, podcasting wasn't that cool. It wasn't sexy. You weren't getting some accolades for it. Even being an entrepreneur, maybe wasn't that cool. It was kind of what people that couldn't get a good job would go do. So (laughs) over the last few years, you've been seeing this influx of crypto experts and and coaches, people that maybe even jump in your space and they get their first thousand downloads. And then they start teaching people how to launch a podcast when you have podcasters paradise that I was part of that helped me launch mine. How, how have you been able to dif- differentiate and see like, man, for the people out there listening, stay away from these fake gurus. And here's how you spot someone who's the best, right? Because if you study a dollar bill, the people that study fraudulent dollars, they actually never look at fraudulent dollars. They only study real money because if you know the real thing enough, you can spot a fake easily. Ooh. Tell us how we can study the real people and easily spot a fake. Yeah. Well, first off, you ever hear the words fake it till you make it? That is the worst advice you will ever ever have because people want genuine. They want honest. They want transparent. They want the real genuine you. That's the person they want to root for that they're going to know, like, and trust. And so the fact of the matter is, Nicholas, you've been lied to. I've been lied to. We've all been lied to over the years. And it's, you know, it's just part of being a human being and living life. But like, 
who have we been lied to? We've been lied to by people that want you to think that the path to success is hidden, that it's secret, that it's complicated. Let me be very clear. The path to uncommon success is a lot of hard work, but it is a common path. It is a clear path. And I have created that path for you. And this doesn't just come from my head, from my journey. Although I am a successful entrepreneur now for nine years with a multi-million dollar a year business that's generated over $20 million since 2012. So I'm part of this obviously, but it's the total download that I've had of the 3000 interviews. It's this complete combination of learning from all of these amazing, successful entrepreneurs who are all my mentors. Like as I'm interviewing them, I'm taking notes, I'm learning, I'm their mentee. And that's an amazing thing about podcasting that allowed me to connect with all of these over 3000 unbelievable entrepreneurs, learn from all of them, obviously implement what I'm hearing from them immediately into my business. Just like you're saying, like, as soon as I hear it from them, the interview is going live on Entrepreneurs on Fire in like a month. I'm like, I'm doing this today because I'm getting a head start on even my listeners because this is important stuff to implement. And I said, you know, it's finally, it's time. Like I've done enough interviews, 3000 interviews where I have over hundred million listens. My show gets 1.4 million listens every single month. It's time for me to just write down all the commonalities that all of these entrepreneurs possess so that I can kind of start to understand myself, like what are the commonalities that all successful entrepreneurs possess and then potentially, you know, learn from that. And so when I boiled it all down and I cut off all the fat and I combined all the similar ones, I was left with 17 foundational principles. I tried to cut it down to 16 to make it an even number. I couldn't do it. Tried to I, don't like, want, I don't like even numbers, by the way. So this that's, is there I'm you go. Here. This is this is for you. You know, I even tried to bump up to 18 or 19 to be like, there must be a couple more. There's not. There are 17 foundational principles. And I took those principles, I put them in put them in a chronological order. And I looked down and I was like, this is a roadmap. This is a roadmap that will take any individual who follows this roadmap, who applies the principles, who puts in the hard work to financial freedom and fulfillment. You will get both of those things, financial freedom and fulfillment. And believe me, you don't want to be living life with only one of those two because financial freedom without fulfillment, like that's not a happy life. You want to be fulfilled while you're financially free. And just to be honest with you, money can't buy happiness, but not having money makes it pretty hard to be happy because you can, it's, you, it's really hard to be fulfilled if you're not financially free. Cause now what are you doing? You're working for somebody else. You're answering to somebody else's drum, their demands. You're not able to wake up in the morning and do what you want, where you want, with whom you want. I mean, look at Nicholas and Amanda, they get to wake up and work every day with a person they love the same with myself, my fiance, Caitlin Erickson. So that is such an amazing part about the combination of being financially free and fulfilled and I put the steps down, 17 step roadmap. And this is the common path to uncommon success. So if this is appealing to you, the roadmap is here, the steps are here. Now it's on you to read it, to implement it and to execute, that's it. What it reminds me of, what you just touched on, there's something popped up was that Tony Robbins actually talks about that the ultimate failure is, is success without fulfillment which Ooh. was that one side, right? It's like, yeah. you have all the stuff, but you're laying there going, I, I don't love this. And it's interesting because fulfillment without monetary, there has to be a level of monetary for anyone. Someone has to pay for something. Right? Yep. If, you gotta if eat I'm going to go visit you, you gotta, I got to fly on a plane. Got to have shelter. You know, yep. you've got a child, you got to put food in that child's, that child's mouth. I mean, there are things that we need money for. Like as much as maybe you and I wish we were back in the hunter gatherer, we're not. We're not hunter gatherers anymore. Like we're not our, going our out. Lifespan is like forty five back then. Yeah. I don't think I want to go back there. None of them had teeth by the time they were thirty. No thanks. Like you know, there were some good things about those days. A lot of bad things about those days. Let's live in the present. Let's make some money. And listen, by the way, by some money, one of my dear friends is making eighty seven thousand dollars a year in Bozeman, Montana, living on a lake, getting up every day, doing what he loves: fishing, hiking spending a couple hours on the business that he loves and going to bed, living well below his means, being financially free. That is financial freedom, what he's created in his life. 
And that is powerful. So that's why, by the way, a little spoiler alert, chapter 17, the final chapter, keep the money you make. And this is what so few entrepreneurs do. Some entrepreneurs that you see out there that are crushing it right now, and they're bringing in millions of dollars. They are not keeping the money they make. And it is a bad scenario. So true. And I want to go back and uncover some of these principles that maybe kind of like give us a little bit of an insight inside the book. Yet there's nothing like highlighting. I, I, literally, if someone would just message me and say, hey, I can't buy a book, I'll buy you the book. I'm putting Whoa. myself out there. I'll buy the book. And if wow. so, because I don't want it to be about that. What I care about is that John is unlike some of the other people out there that you may see write a book a month. They may do a book in two days because, oh, let's get a book done in a weekend and they, they map it out. And there's nothing wrong with all that stuff. You want to do some lead generation. You want to take your best stuff and throw it out there. John isn't one of those types of guys. I mean, how you could have had this book out years ago. <laughs> Let me jump in on that because you're making such a great point. Writing a book in a weekend for the right person, the right time, that is a good thing to do because sometimes you just got to get things out of your head, get onto a piece of paper and go and give it away, have it a lead gen, have it this, have it that, whatever it might be. I am all for taking action and getting stuff out there. My first book podcast launch, I wrote in a weekend. It's a small book. It's just meant to teach you how to launch a podcast. It wasn't meant to be this whole thing. I wrote it in a weekend. It was fantastic. It still is. It still sells copies. Nothing wrong with that. This is so different. This is 10 years of my journey. This is thousands and thousands of hours of talking to the world's most successful entrepreneurs. This is January to August of 2020. While we were all quarantined, I was in this office right now where I'm standing, writing two hours a day because I, I, I knew that was where I could do my best work. So I didn't force it. Didn't try to write three, four, five hours a day, two hours a day for eight months, 480 writing hours, 71,000 words, 273 pages. This book is a beast, like not a Tim Ferriss tribe of mentors beast. That thing <laughs> is, a, is a gravestone. This is a business book that you want, that you need, and that is so meaty, is such a beast. Believe me, this is not just, by the way, the 480 writing hours I talked about. It's what Nicholas has talked about. It is a download of my 10 years of, of success and the 3,000 interviews that I've done with their probably, I should sit down and do a cumulative of their careers. It's literally probably a download of like 300,000 years. Because like every one of these 3,000 entrepreneurs, you know, has 20 years of experience on average, maybe 30 Let's do the math, man. It, it's it's crazy. And think about, and I again, I'm not here. It's not my book. I, I don't have any type of benefit from talking about it. Yet, just to put one cap on this, and then I want to, I have something I want to talk about that I cool. believe is going to be really good. When you look at the, the 3,000 plus, what would it take? I, I have people come in and do trainings, and you pay sometimes a thousand or 10,000, depending on the person, to come and teach something. And inside of your interview process and things that you've learned have been their best stuff. So they've spent all these years, all this money, all this failure, millions of ads spent, whatever it is, to learn all this stuff and bring it to you. And then all of a sudden, you've invested the time. So think about this. One, what would it take to have 3,000 people tell you all these things? Let's just say it was $1,000 a person times 3,000. It's like 3 million or something like that. Let's just say that, which is way lower than some of the people that you've brought on the show. And the second thing, though, is your time. Though you talked about a multi-million dollar business, people actually go to your site, go type in EO Fire and go check out his stuff. You actually have like your earnings and the things that you, the deductions of your expenses and you show profit. There's people, there was someone the other day that was doing $5 or $5 million a year and profiting less than 60K. It's just the cost of doing business was too high for that business. They actually made more when they were at $1 million a year than at $5 million a year. And so you show all of that stuff. So when I think about that, I think John's sitting in Puerto Rico. He, you're living the life that you want. You're not working 18 hours a day, I'm assuming. You never were. About, about five days a month when I'm not in book promo mode. Okay, five days a month. So taking the money by five days a month, that's the amount of time that it takes. That, that would be the cost per dollar per hour that he makes. And then he invested that writing the book, which is even more valuable than all that compiled that I just talked about. So- if anyone's thinking about getting the book, just just grab it. So when I go to the next phase, you talked about your friend who was living by the lake, making 80 grand a year. 
I think this is really cool to talk about because your lifestyle, you have some VAs, you, mm -hmm. you don't have this. My friend has passed 101 employees. My other friend passed mm. 200 employees, not the same thing. And if people try to be like you, but they were supposed to be like this guy, they'd be unhappy. And if you tried to be like them, you'd definitely be unhappy. That's why Great you point. already know. They say that you first you learn how to play someone else's music before you write your own. And so sometimes we need to copy or, or kind of mimic what other people are doing in life. And then the next phase is to find out what we want, which is what your friend did. Tell me about how these people can really figure out what they want to get out of life. Maybe you address this in the book, because if that guy with 80K is trying to be you, he's going to be unhappy no matter what. He would have been happy if he just figured out what he wanted to get out of life. How do people do that? You're making a great point. I want to bring up like Gary Vaynerchuk is so happy having 900 employees working from 6 a.m. to midnight, killing himself, grinding away. And I tip my hat to him. I think he's living his best life. I'm the opposite. Like I literally want to spend five, six days a month working. Like, like, and by working, I mean like I'm crushing it for those five days. Like I am just <laughs> doing a ton of work during those five days. So efficient. And then I want, you know, 20, 25 days a month where I'm just, you know, doing email here and there, social media here and there, but out by my pool, by my lake, hiking, doing other things. That's my lifestyle design. I did not, I was not able to get there year one, year two, year three, year four of my business. But now that I'm entering, you know, my ninth year of this business, like I've got there, like I've got the team, I've got the systems, the tools, the automations. So you've got to find you. And again, just like, you know, they say to girls, you got to kiss a lot of frogs, you know, bef before you find your prince. You got you to try a lot of things on for size before you find out what business really makes you sing and really, really, really is in your heart. And that's why chapter one, step one of this book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success, is identify your big idea. It's not identify a big idea. We can all identify a big idea. We can just point at them. They're all out there. But what's your big idea? How can you wake up every single day and live in your zone of fire? your zone of fire. I'm living in my zone of fire this very second, talking to Nicholas, hanging out. This is what I do. When I'm interviewing people for my show, when I'm being interviewed on other shows, when I'm doing Clubhouse or IG TV or this or that, this is my zone of fire. This is where I spend all of my best time when I'm leveraging and scaling myself and I'm being most efficient is right now. What is your zone of fire? That's the thing you need to identify in chapter one, step one it gets you there on the right foot. And a lot of you are close. This will help you tweak, pivot, and adjust to really make sure you nail it. Because being close to your big idea is you might as well be 10 miles off. You need you're to be- three feet from gold, dude. You can't you're three feet from gold. You got to be in the gold. You've got to be in your big idea. You've got to be living your zone of fire. So you're in one of three camps. You're either three feet from gold. Let's tweak and adjust and get you to the gold. You're either way off. So let's just do a reset and get you to your pot of gold. Or number three, you're there. Awesome. Let's confirm and validate it and give a thumbs up. Now we've got 16 more steps. Let's get to work. There was this lady that used to work for the Queen of England. I don't know if you've heard the story. She worked there, retired, worked her whole life there, lived in poverty, had no running water. These news reporters at the time, whatever they were, they went over there and they, they met this lady and her most prized possession, they walked in there. You worked for the queen for like 45 years. How are you living in poverty? Like, <laughs> this is terrible. You, you were in this nice palace. And she's, she showed them this piece of paper. She said, the queen signed it. It's the most amazing thing ever. I can't believe she did this. And they, they looked at her like, what, what's wrong with you? She goes, <laughs> what? They're like, this is a check for 100,000 pounds. And you never <laughs> cashed it. She was sitting in her gold. But because of the lack of clarity, education, she didn't know what was right in front of her. And it took someone coming in and saying, you have a check in your house that you framed because <laughs> you thought it was a gift from the queen with a signature, but it would actually would have gotten her out of poverty this entire time. <laughs> oh, That's man. You That's have some great stories, man. I love it. I wish we had more than two minutes right now. So uh, unfortunately, we've got to bring this home with a bang. So what do you got for us? So I, I saw that you have all these bonuses for pre-orders right yeah. now. We talked about the the common path to uncommon success. Break through or break down for us real quick the pre-order, which you see right there, book. We're gonna get it. Yet what tell me what's the best way to get it and that way that we gotcha. can get some of these bonuses. Cause I have them, I literally have them up on my phone. I've been looking at it like <laughs> I need to win this thing. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Listen, it's pretty clear is that you do not want to wait 
for March 23rd, which is the date that these books are, will be available everywhere because there will be zero bonuses for you if you wait that long. If you pre-order today, you will get five amazing bonuses. One, just one of them. I'm not even gonna spoil all of them, but just one of them. I'm gonna ship all three of my journals to your door if you're in the United States of America. The digital versions will be immediately emailed to you if you're outside of the United States. That's $150 worth of journal value shipped to your door. This is my, these are my best works ever before this book, of course. And you're getting them for free with a pre-order of this book. So the $16 Kindle version, the $26 hardcover, your choice, the Audible book, your, your choice. Um, there's four other amazing bonuses. Plus, this book has been uh, endorsed by Gary Vaynerchuk. He's at the top there. Seth Godin, Neil Patel, Dory Clark, Eric Mandy, The Ballers. So proud of those endorsements. So if you visit UncommonSuccessBook.com, you'll see a video, all details about the book. You'll see those endorsements. You'll see chapter ones there. You can get to see my writing style a little bit. <clears throat> you'll also see all five bonuses, which will every one of them will blow your minds. And then you can pre-order right there. Pre-order this book, make it happen. Um, you want these bonuses, UncommonSuccessBook.com. Nicholas, this was awesome. Dude, thanks so much. I just looked, there was over $1,000 worth of bonuses. Someone might ask, why does he do something like this? Well, he wants to get the book out there to more people. Totally. Reason. What's he going to do with all that money he saves from taxes? He needs to use it to get it out Give there it to, to more you guys. people. So we're, we're the ones call, that get the benefit. I'm call me Robin Hood. And if, <laughs> if other people pre-order as well, let me know. Maybe we can do like a little book club thing. Let me know what chapter you're on. I'm, I'm down to read it. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to underline. I'm going to send pictures to John actually so that he's like, Nicholas is the best. He's reading my book and taking notes. I already know that. I already know you're the best. I appreciate it so much, man. Thank you so much. And make sure to pre-order the book. This was so fun. <laughs>